What's going on y'all? We just filmed probably the most in-depth walkthrough install video that we've ever done before. We did a Lowrance install, a full Yak Power 5 switch panel, two interior lights and the bow lights, and we walked you through every single thing that well, we did on this boat from just the basics to some little tips and tricks that we use to keep everything clean and also make the install go a little bit easier. So y'all check it out and let us know what you think. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. The first thing we did on this install is drill the hole for our five switch panel uh, from Yak Power. So you need a two and one eighth inch size drill bit. What we did is on the Slayer Max, you have two plates on each side to drill holes, you know, run your wires through. That way you don't have to actually drill into the boat. So we went ahead and drilled our pilot hole. Uh, as you can see, drilled it out with that two and one eighth inch bit and then um, what happens with this two and one eighth inch bit, that's what they recommend. But once you drill it and then you kind of test fit it, sometimes it can be a little tight. So uh, sometimes you got to wallow out the hole a little bit more, um, but it ends up being a, a super snug fit and you don't have to worry about water getting in the hole that way. We actually added the six foot extension from Yak Power just to give us a little bit more room to reach our switch panel that you'll see where, uh, we mounted later up in the front hatch. So we're just fishing our wire through. Fishing it up to the front hatch and then we'll place the switch panel where it's going to end up going and then tighten it down with the three screws that are included on the panel. So now we're up in the front hatch and I'm kind of laying out where exactly I want this switch panel to go. So kind of had a little bit of a, a challenge right here i wanted the switch panel to be on the inside to give us enough room for our battery so i put it on the outside to drill my top two holes and then you'll see i actually partially install the switch uh, panel inside the boat to allow me to see where i need to put my bottom two holes and then i'll go ahead and drill those out and then uh, tie everything together with 1024 hardware so this ends up giving us a super clean install. We're able to hide the wires inside the hole and then also have plenty of room for our battery to fit in that recessed hatch that's right there in the front. So you can see I'm just marking my extra holes. Then I'll put the drill inside the hole of the boat and drill out those bottom two. So now we're moving on to installing our interior lights. So we're using the included bit with the Yak Power button lights, drilling it into that same plate that we put the switch panel. Uh, and we're actually gonna remove that switch panel and uh, it'll allow us to feed our wires through a little bit easier and also tighten the, uh, and also tighten the button light to the, the panel itself. Gonna use our rigging tube right there and uh, actually feed the wire through the plate first and then connect it to our rigging tube and feed it up to the front where our switch panel is. So 
So in hindsight, what I would have done is keep the panel off of the, the boat while we're tightening down that button light. That allows us to make sure that the wire isn't twisting up on the inside of the boat and possibly coming loose from the, the button. I have, I've only had this happen one time and it was in a really tight spot. So if you can reach in there behind the hole, like say you don't have a plate that you can remove, try to reach in there and keep that wire from binding and twisting up and it'll allow your, your wire to uh, lay a little bit more naturally and you want to worry about it pulling out of the back of the battery. So you can see we actually did that on this side. We already pre-connected uh, the button light and now we're gonna go ahead and install the plate back on the boat and get it ready for the next phase. So now we're getting our hole ready for the fish finder wiring. So we're using the Yak Attack through hole plugs. So there's just your little pilot hole. And now I'm using a step down bit. Um, this bit is incredible for kayak rigging. It always leaves behind a perfect hole uh, with no rough edges or anything. And it really allows you to uh, make a clean cut and not have to worry about, you know, some of those, those uh, bits that are really rough, they'll grab the plastic and then, you know, scratch up the plastic where you don't want uh, the hole to be so the whole bit stays under control the whole time and allows you to have a really clean and nice hole so now we're actually setting up the fish finder power wire with a yak power plug so as you can see we've hit on this before but we'll hit on it again we're using the heat shrink solder connections that we have on the website as well as some heat shrink tubing this allows us to have a super clean install and it uh, prevents corrosion because everything's super watertight and the waters, I mean, the wires are soldered together. So you never have to worry about, you know, salt or any kind of kind of uh, water or humidity to get in there and ruin your wire setup. And I, I, since we started using this, I've never had issues with uh, corrosion like we did when we used crimp connections. So we use a heat gun. You can use a, wire, a uh, lighter if you're in a pinch. The heat gun is just kind of nice to use in the shop because it you know, heats it up a little bit faster and uh, makes sure it's, it's clean and it's not gonna burn. So once that connection kind of cools off a little bit, we can slide over the heat shrink. Make sure you slide the heat shrink onto your wire before you solder everything together. We put them together before and forgotten the heat shrink and have to rip it all apart. So make sure you slide that heat shrink on there before you use the solder connection. We're doing the same thing with the negative wire. So now we're moving on to the transducer install. These Slayer Maxes have, and actually a lot of the natives have a little plate um, directly underneath where you'll see that we put the battery. This plate allows us to mount our transducer and it's actually kind of a recessed part of the hole. Um, so the transducer is kind of protected, but it still has enough room to shoot out your side scan. So we're just using little, uh, I think they're number 10 stainless steel uh, three quarter inch screws to secure our transducer plate to the plate that's on the boat. And then you'll see we uh, install it back underneath the hole and then run our wire through the hole that's in that little recessed cubby in the front hatch. The one key thing is you'll see that we ran the wire uh, back underneath the silver uh, piece that, that connects the transducer. The reason being is when we put it back underneath the boat, it actually didn't sit flush with the hole. 
Um, so we had to kind of redo it and run it, uh, through that silver piece. So that way it kind of ran back. Um, and then it, it lines up a little bit better with the hole that we're running the transducer through and the, the mount's actually able to go flush. So now we're making another hole for another uh, <coughs> Yak Attack uh, wire plug. Um, this is going to, going to actually do two things for us. It allows us to run our transducer wire back into the hole and it'll actually let us run our Yak Power power wire back into this cubby and then we'll be able to connect to our battery that way. feeding our transducer wire back through that hole and then we'll gather up all the extra slack actually run it to the other side of the boat where the customer wanted his uh, fish finder mounted and you can see I'm using that same uh, rigging tube just pulled it through the hole that we made in uh, the Slayer Max plate and then I'm actually feeding the power wire the opposite way back up to the front so we can hook it up to our Yak Power system. Now we're just connecting everything through to the other side of the boat using the same Yak Attack through hole plug. This is just a standard, you know, fish finder setup, nothing really special here. Now we're installing our screws in that front hatch to secure the Yak Attack plug. The customer also wanted the Yak Power 10 inch nav uh, LED strip lights. So we're throwing those on the front. He's gonna eventually do a motor setup. He's still undecided whether he wants to do a bow mount or something like a new port on the, the rear of the boat. So went ahead and threw those on. That way we could tie it into our Yak Power system out the gate. Um, and then once he decides on which motor setup he wants to roll with, we can go ahead and install that. And uh, really we won't have to tie anything else into the Yak Power system, but he'll already have those, those nav lights installed so he can be legal in the water. So these Yak Power lights are pretty slick with the, the install. It's very similar to the button lights, except you use a little slightly bigger hole and gets a half inch bit. And then you use the included Allen key that comes with the lights to uh, cut the threads into the plastic of your boat. And then once it's installed, really all you have to do is plug the light into it. So we're cleaning off the hole with acetone right there. That way the uh, adhesive on the back of the light will, will grab a little bit better. Then we can just plug the light in pull the adhesive off the back of the light make sure where everything's level and then you'll install a little uh, small screw on the front of it just to make sure that it has a permanent uh, install on the boat So this is one little tip that, you know, is kind of different than, than what a lot of people do. On these Yak Power battery connections, just a standard connection that connects to a regular battery, um, they include the little pieces that slide on your, you know, the connections that come with the 10 amp hour batteries and smaller batteries. And then they also include the rings that you can connect to bigger batteries. The issue with these rings is they're actually too big for most of the Z Pro batteries. So what we do is, 
we clip off those old connections and we throw on some new rings that are smaller and actually have heat shrink on them so they're more of a permanent solution to connect to your battery you don't have to worry about the the uh, rings on the the standard connections pulling out um, we also hit them with a little bit of heat shrink and it just makes it for a really clean install and you know more permanent i feel more confident with our customers um, going out of the shop with these i don't have to worry about them accidentally pulling the o-ring out of the battery connection so these are just standard connections you can find in any auto parts store. Just crimp, crimp them down and then they have some uh, heat shrink material built around it. And then we add some, some more of the black heat shrink around it just to make it a little bit more secure. Now we're gonna go ahead and actually connect the battery connection to our Z-Pro battery. Uh, we're using the 12 volt 30 amp power for this setup. It's plenty of power for the Lorenz unit that he's running, as well as the lights. And he actually he's actually gonna have two extra switches. So if he wants to add more interior lights, more exterior lights, USB power, whatever he wants to add later on in the future, he'll have enough battery for it and he has an extra plug for it. So now Alex is working his magic. He's cleaning up all the wiring, getting that extra, you know, 10 foot of extra transducer wire all bound up. We're gonna hide it uh, a little bit further back in the hole. He's also gonna do the same thing with the light, extra light wiring uh, for the bow lights and the front lights and the uh, interior lights, sorry. So now this is one of the little extra things that we do on every single fish finder install that comes in the shop. We use our uh, Louisiana Custom Kayaks rigging sleeve, feed our wires through it, and it keeps everything clean and together. You don't have to worry about you know your wires being all over the place when you don't have your fish finder hooked up. Um, and I think it just looks a lot better uh, at the end of the day. Um, we're all about keeping you know things clean and, and just as, as smooth as can be on your boat. So that's one little extra thing that we do, and we do have those on the website as well. Now we're just using our yak, yak Attack fish finder mount to tie everything together. Super solid mount. I also like how it's quick release um, and it's easy to take your, your graph on and off the boat. Now we're just placing that battery up in the front hatch, just like we had said before. We'll plug it into our plug that's right there. But first, we're actually gonna put some more of that grease on the connections. This guy's mainly a freshwater guy, but you know, it is nice to have that uh, extra grease on the connections to fight that corrosion that you may have. Uh, may encounter and also if he wants to take a saltwater fishing to kind of have that extra peace of mind so that wraps it up we uh just powered up the system number one is for our fish finder we typically always do that because that's the one that most of our anglers use the most the bow is going to be our nav lights the red and green up on the front and then m is going to be the interior lights so keep it super simple we've got two and s if we want to add anything else to the boat later on uh, we appreciate y'all checking this this video out. If you got any questions, as always, reach out, lacustomkayaks at gmail.com.